We visit a spice garden and have a traditional curry lunch cooked for us demonstrating how the spices are used. The ancient fortress of Sigiriya is a massive rock column surrounded by jungle nearly 200 metres high and formed from magma from an extinct volcano. Sigiriya's gardens are amongst the oldest landscaped gardens in the world, with a complex hydraulic system consisting of canals, locks, lakes, dams and fountains. In the rainy season when the channels are filled with water, the fountains built in the 5th century begin to operate. Sigiriya became the royal capital of King Kasyapa, who ruled from 477 to 495 AD, after he abandoned the previous capital of Anuradhapura following a dispute with the Buddhist clergy. Kasyapa decided to create his own version of the mythical Buddhist city of Alakamanda, the city of the gods, appearing to float amongst the clouds on the Sigiriya rock. Over 500 frescoes covering about 5,600 square metres and depicting women of his court as asparas or celestial nymphs showering flowers on the humans below were painted in a wide band around the waist of the rock while Kasyapa, the god king, lived in his sky palace. Only 19 of the original frescoes remain in a small pocket of rock about 100 metres above the ground and up a steep metal stair. Twelve hundred steps lead to Sigiriya's summit. It's a hot day and heat radiates from the rock. On the near perpendicular western surface of the rock, this parapet, enclosing a two-metre inner passageway, was once highly polished white masonry. 
plaster of fine lime, egg whites and honey was polished with beeswax, giving a mirror-like sheen. The gatehouse was built like a crouching sphinx-like lion, with a staircase 35 metres high, 21 metres wide and protruding 11 metres from the rock face. All that remains are the enormous paws, with a semicircular granite moonstone at the base of the stairs. Due to the heat, we stop at a small escarpment halfway up the northern side of the rock, still 600 stairs short of the summit, where King Kazyapa built a huge gatehouse to guard the final entrance to his sky palace. For 300 years, Palonarua was the royal capital of both the Chola, the South Indian dynasty who conquered Sri Lanka in the 10th century, and the Sinhalese kingdoms. In 1070, the Sinhalese king Vijay Abahu I overcame the Chola dynasty and made Palonarua his capital. This is the royal palace of the second king, Parakrambahu I, who reigned from 1153 to 1186 once believed to be 7 metres tall with 3 metre thick walls and 50 rooms supported by 30 columns, it was a huge building. Vatadaga is a circular Buddhist structure built around a small stupa for its protection and often containing a relic. This Vatadaga may have had the tooth relic of the Buddha enshrined in it. It has four elaborately decorated entrances aligned north, south, east and west 
a moonstone, a Sandaka Kada Pahana, is at the foot of the steps flanked by guard stones which lead to the raised platform. This complex was the main centre of Buddhist studies in Palomarua. The Saf Mahal Prasada, a seven-storied stepped pyramid and the only one of its kind in Sri Lanka, is believed to have been built between the 11th and 13th centuries. There's no record of its build or purpose, but it's similar to Shiva temples in Siem Reap and to a temple in Tikal, Guatemala. The Rankoth for Hira Stupa was completed in 1190. The Galvahara is a 12th century rock temple of Buddha at Palonirua built by King Parakram Bahu I. Four rock relief statues of Buddha are carved into the face of a large granite rock and are considered some of the best examples of ancient Sinhalese sculpting and carving. Our farm lunch at Priya Mali Gadara near Polonrua was cooked the traditional way and we ate in thatched huts overlooking the paddy fields. Originally designated a wildlife sanctuary in 1938, Minaria became a national park in 1997. It protects the catchment of the Minaria tank or reservoir, which was built by King Mahasan in the 3rd century AD. He ruled between 277 and 304. The tank supports a dry season feeding ground for the elephant population in the forests of Matali, Palonurua and Trincomalee. Covering 4,670 acres, a 13 metre tall dam, 2 kilometres long, held over 20 billion gallons of water, creating, along with other reservoirs, a huge irrigation area.
There are large numbers of Sri Lankan elephants here, attracted by these glass fields, with some estimates being as high as 700 animals. Monkeys, deer, the Sri Lankan leopard and sloth bear can also be found here, and Minaria is an important habitat for water birds. It's another long slow climb up to the caves in the heat with about 200 steps in between long rocky slopes. Tambula is the largest and best preserved cave temple complex in Sri Lanka. Although there are more than 80 caves in the surrounding area, these five caves under an overhanging rock ledge towering 160 metres over the surrounding plain date back to the 1st century BC. Beautiful murals cover an area of about 2100 square metres of the rock faces within these caves and there are also 153 Buddha statues, three statues of Sri Lankan kings, four statues of gods and goddesses. The largest cave is 52 metres long, 23 metres deep and up to 7 metres high. A monastery still operates here and dates from the 3rd and 2nd centuries BC.
The ancient city of Anuradhapura dates back to the 4th century BC and was the spiritual and secular capital of Sri Lanka for over a millennium. One of its focal points is the restored ancient Abhayagiri Dagaba, the original custodian of the tooth relic in the 4th century BC. One of the Katampakuna twin bathing pools in the Abhayagiri Vihara complex used by the monks. Water was transferred through underground ducts and filtered before filling the pools which are built of granite. The Abhayagiri Vihara was a major monastery, one of the most extensive ruins in the world and is one of the most sacred Buddhist pilgrimage sites in Sri Lanka. Moonstones seen at the foot of temple steps are unique creations of Sri Lankan sculptors representing the samsara, the endless cycle of rebirth, and the path to freedom representing nirvana. Wellasai was built by King Dutu Gemenu around 140 BC after he defeated the Chola King Elalan and became king of all Sri Lanka. One of the 16 places of Buddhist veneration, it's one of the world's tallest ancient monuments at 103 metres with a circumference of 290 metres. It holds the largest collection of Buddha relics in the world. The Forest Rock Garden Resort where we lunch is in a beautiful 50 acre bush setting built to evoke feelings of the Anuradhapura of ancient times. The entire complex including the rooms and public areas are built on pillars over 20 feet high connected by walkways to preserve the environment. Only three trees were removed during construction and now 100,000 rare herbal plants are being introduced. Our Sri Lankan visit concludes at the Anantaya resort on the beach of Chilor, Tamil for pearl fishery. We're 80 kilometres north of Colombo and fly out early tomorrow morning. <laughs>